Welcome to the Zanbergen Report, where wealth strategies and investment wisdom collide. Featuring your distinguished host and certified financial planner, Bart Zanbergen. Welcome to the Zanbergen Report, a showcase for wealth strategies and investment wisdom that's essential for our evolving world. I'm your host, Bart Zanbergen, and we have a telephone box. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's the genius of live radio. Just hit the button on the far left and hit it down. Just keep hitting it down there. The far left and the bottom there. We'll cut all this out there. There we go. There we go. All right. All right. See, it's, that's the joys of live radio here, that's folks. That's how we do it here. That's how we do it here. Well, Paul, I don't think we've ever had such a full... <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, you're pressing the bounds. You can't see, but off camera, there's publicists, there's makeup people, there's uh, photographers, everybody. There's a whole crew in here today. Well, I'm certainly pleased to have a, a room full, as we said. I've got my partner, Letitia Burbaum. Hello, Letitia. Hello. And we have our special guest, Shane Bond, who is a member of the CDFA and also the Leisure Society designer. Sean, welcome to the show. Shane, welcome to the show. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no problem, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best comeback we've had in five years. Yeah. Just so simple. He did it right there. There we go. So, Shane, um, we're excited to have you on the show today. I know you've got uh, a, a very great pedigree of, of history and, and what you've done and where you've been. Um, let's start with telling the audience what a CDFA is. Yeah, it's the CFDA, so it's the Council. <laughs> I'm just screwing that's, everything up. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. We're off to, uh, we can only improve from here. Oh, <laughs> so it's the Council of Fashion Designers of America. So it would be a, a group of uh, designers. I guess the more prominent members would be Calvin Klein, Ralph Lauren, uh, Tom uh, Ford, um, just virtually a, a, a laundry list of some of the best designers in the world, Mark Jacobs, um, uh, Tory Birch, and uh, it's an organization that focuses on mostly on on uh, bringing up young designers um, and also educating uh, people of uh, the art of of design. And so it's a fraternity that's been, uh, I guess, around fraternity slash sorority um, that's been around the better part of fifty years. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. And so it's not an, like an organized um, degree of some sort. It's something you do either post or or pre or in conjunction with school. Well, the membership is um, by invitation only and so every year people submit their portfolios and then they admit uh, a certain amount of members per year and uh, and then you are a lifetime member and then every year they uh, they have the uh, the fashion awards um in the uh early summer of the year and so they uh they give awards for you know men's wear designer of the year women's wear designer of the year accessories designer of the year and so on oh great and so it's a pretty big affair great. they hold in new york how long have you been a member i guess about seven years nice congratulations oh, thank you yeah do any of those wards go along with you? <laughs> not yet. Not yet? Working on it? No. An eyewear designer, um, which is my specialty, um, has yeah. not won the accessories award yet. Yeah. But okay. I am hopeful, and uh, um, I can envision that someday. So. Well, we're rooting for you. Thank you. <laughs> so why don't you tell the audience to start with what Leisure Society is, and then I'd like to talk about how you got to where you are. No problem. Leisure Society is the world's finest eyewear. Um, I uh, had spent um, a good part of my career working with Louis Vuitton and specifically working on um, eyewear for them. And uh, eventually uh, they insisted that I move to Paris and I had young children at the time and that was not going to be an option. So uh, I declined the job and all my mentors said, well, your resume is not going to get much better, um, so you might as well um, make your own brand. Wow. And so I, I decided to name it after a social club that I had called Leisure Society. All right. Um, and how long ago did you do that? I guess uh, I started the brand seven years ago. Okay. All right. So um, I've heard the word uh, heirloom design. So tell us what that means. Well, heirloom design is, is making something once with the intention of it lasting forever. Um, and there's a lot of, I guess there's a, a, a designer name or an inventor named Saul Griffith. And he's got behind this theory of, um, you know, if you made something to last 50 or 100 years um, and you put a certain amount of energy in it, um, it's ultimately sustainable. And so a good example of that might be, um, like I'm wearing a watch, for example, that was made in the 1950s. And it has replaceable parts. It still keeps time perfectly. And it actually has increased in value over time. And so I guess I, I first learned about this collecting guitars specifically American-made guitars, and yeah. then uh, all of a sudden, I mean, you're in investments. Yeah. And so, I mean, what a great investment to buy and watch it increase in value over time, um, have a sentimental value, 
Um, and ultimately, um, you know, should you want to get rid of it, it's a, it's a nice investment. I know people think the same about classic cars sometimes. Yeah. So I've always kind of been um, obsessed with uh, products of inherent value. Um, yeah. That which is super unusual for a use asset, right? Because usually, usually a- assets that we use, i.e., a car or or the maybe the lesser brand watches or or normal sunglasses, they basically go down to a zero value. So, what makes some something like that, like that different? What makes yours um, maintain a value or or a presence? Well, you know, there's the inherent value mm-hmm. of uh, using uh, exotic metals. So everything that we make is made with 12, 18, and 24 karat gold plated titanium. Uh, best in class lenses comes with a leather case and a lifetime warranty. Did you bring any to see? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah? yeah, of course. We're they, ready. Bring them out let's here. Let's, yeah, yeah, while we're talking, let's take a look at some of them here. Why don't you give them the pair you're wearing, Erin? This is the beta titanium. Correct, yeah. So pretty. So we're, we're live. By the way, and then we're also on the video, so I'm going to bring it up to the camera so you guys can take a wow. look if you're watching on YouTube. <laughs> now describe what we're seeing. Yeah, what, please what tell us yeah. what we're looking at. So you're seeing a 18 uh, karat uh, gold plated beta titanium. It is a memory metal. Put um, them on there, Letitia. That's right. right? <laughs> yeah. Yo, you're a great model. Go ahead and put it on. Okay, I'm going to put them on. Yeah. Can we do some sort of QVC slot right now? <laughs> <laughs> we only have 300 left. Love it, 300. Love it. So tell me about these glasses. And so those are 18 karat gold plated titanium. Uh, the lenses are CR39. Uh, there's a 12 layer and a reflective coating. What, is uh, C- what does any yeah. of that mean? So, so CR39 mean? is a material that's uh, 99.9% um, optical clarity. So okay. it's one of the most clear materials that you can make a lens with. It's not just plastic. It's oh, not yeah, just glass good. or you something. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Okay. It, it they had, look good on, but they actually, you can see at them and they look great. Mm. It has the yeah. optical clarity of glass, um, but the lightness of a, of, a, of a nylon. There's also a 12-layer anti-reflective coating on the inside, um, which helps any glare or sunlight from the back. 12 layers of anti-glare yeah. coating okay. on it? And Thanks. so you're saying even from the back, it doesn't uh, correct. It, it keeps. It's it not a, just from the front, but it's from the back, as it bounces out. You can... Correct, and then and then there's also a diamond cast scratch resistance, which keeps um, oh the lenses goodness. from sca- scratching. That's what I need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, on top of that, there's a hydrophobic coating, um, which doesn't seem important at all until you find yourself on the front of a boat or something like that, and you get splashed, and the, and the water yeah. the water will come off like a freshly waxed car. Got it. It beads off. It doesn't just stick to it. So can I, I, I'm just fascinated. I know this is their show, but I just can't stop talking here. <laughs> this is Paul. <laughs> is this some? I never heard of any of this stuff. Are you the only one doing this, or is this just I'm not living in the right world? I'm just going down and buying my glasses at Lens Crafter here or something. Well, we are best in class, and, and again, coming off a project like Louis Vuitton, we wanted to make sure that um, – that we were doing everything to the best of our ability. So I knew that titanium and uh, titanium is the lightest and strongest material. Um, we played it with gold not to be fancy, but because gold is the most corrosion resistant. Yes, exactly. That's uh, why they use in audio equipment all the time. Uh, gold plated stuff plugs and everything here because it doesn't corrode. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I was looking at a chart uh, just yesterday. We shared it with our sales agents. And uh, the most corrosive material, of course, was uh, magnesium. You remember throwing a piece in water and watching it spin around and yeah. kind of explode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then if you get to the other end of the table, it was just titanium and gold. And then there's one material that's better than us, which is graphite. Um, but uh, I haven't heard anybody making eyewear from graphite no, yet, so, so we are best in class. So what makes you absolutely unique compared to all of your competitors? Correct. We just know that we can look at anybody in the eye and say we make the best eyewear in the world. You can look at them in the like eye that. and see I like that. I like that and, and where do you get this stuff? And then I'll shut up here. Where do, you, where, where do you find, how would I find you? How would anybody even know that this stuff exists? Well, I mean, if you wanted to buy it locally um, in Newport Beach, Beach, you could go to Amaris, that beautiful boutique on Coast Highway. I think I've um, seen that. I've gone by there, yeah. Yeah, you could buy it at Coast Optometry um, over uh, by Fashion Island. Um, you could buy it at Fred Siegel in Los Angeles. That's a cool store. I've been in there. So selected places you can go find this stuff. Here. Correct. About uh, yeah, about 350 retail locations uh, worldwide right now. All right, so I'm going to bring this back to the investment world. So um, and a little bit of fashion. So it's designed to last a lifetime. But how do you ensure or assure that the the, the fashion statement will survive a lifetime? That's a great question. Uh, we always look for a classically inspired. Um, 
shapes. And there are a certain number of shapes over time, I guess most notably a shape like the aviator. It's, right. not, it's not necessarily in style or out of style. Yeah. Um, it complements uh, most people's faces. Mm. And so you always look at classic shapes, and then um, we're always looking at just redefining uh, textures. And we take a more of a jewelry-like approach because we feel like if you're going to make an heirloom quality product, uh, you have to do it um, with a great attention to detail. Yeah. Is this something you would insure? <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny question because I have so many people that's, that's, well, they always say, like, I always lose my frames. And, yeah. and, uh, and it is kind of a common thing. I will say that um, our frames are a bit more expensive, and so you tend to pay more attention to them. Like yeah. you would uh, a nice watch or your cell phone or a wallet or uh so is it um, is it close to the price of a cell phone? <laughs> More or less, it, it really is. Okay, you okay. know, and, and it's funny that you would mention that because okay. uh, people buy cell phones every day. But yeah, our retail price point sits in the four hundred to fourteen hundred dollar range, yeah. Yeah. with the top end being made from block titanium and plated um, with one micron of platinum and three microns of gold. Wow. So. A little more about your background. Now I'm super fascinated. I was going to get all these business questions, but I'm more interested now in the, on the other part. So are you a, an artist or or just playing designer by by trade? What's your? How did you get to where you are? Yeah, I started out um, with a background in industrial design and industrial oh. technology. And then um, I graduated from school, and my parents were kind of prodding me to get a real job. And, and I had met a, a, a guy named Mossimo um, at the beach here. Yeah. Uh, in Orange County, and uh, the volleyball short Massimo, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, and yeah. he said, "Geez, I got this company that's growing like crazy. Um, what are you doing?" I'm like, "I don't know. I just graduated from college. I'm not doing a lot right now." And so, I started in the warehouse with him. And uh, my parents were still prodding me to get a real job <laughs> and not waste my degree. And uh, after about six months, he said, "Well, geez, you know, um, you have a engineering type background. It seems like you're really wasting your, your life here. You know, I'm starting an eyewear division and it's going to be a little bit more technical. So maybe that would be something good for you to get into. But I really started at the bottom then, you know, I learned to import and mm-hmm. export um, goods, um, you know, manage the cost of goods sold, uh, you know, answer the phone. Hello, yeah. hello, Mossimo Optic, may I help you? <laughs> but really it would be everything that you would need to start a company later in life. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's that's that goes right into what we talk about here. So, any other formal training as far as like business other than on the job, which is the real training? Yeah, I, I uh, minored in business management. Okay. Uh, my father was an entrepreneur, and uh, I'm constantly listening to you know various podcasts and reading books, and just uh, yeah. obsessed with trying to be better as an executive and um, you know and as a designer. Yeah. So, what's your um, your company like? I mean, employees, staff. Uh, yeah, we have. Um, uh, it's a small company, so we're um, about seven people in house, and then twenty two sales agents worldwide, um, and then we work with um, distributors. But we're a, a lean and mean company. What um, What's next for you? Well, I mean, we're really focused right now on just uh, growing our brand and uh, and trying to figure out the direct to consumer uh, model while also dealing with brick and mortar retail. Um, we're uh, always just constantly, uh, yeah, just working on growing the brand. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's an exciting time. And, you know, we're always working on new projects, new collaborations. It's yeah. fun to work with you know, different designers and different brands. Okay. Like, what, and what's that about? So with other optical brands and designs or like like where I met you at Bespoke, that type of thing? Yeah, you could work with uh, nearly anybody. I mean, I've, I've done work with, um, I did a collaboration with Mark Mothersbaugh. The uh, the singer from Devo. Oh yeah, what really? Yeah, it was a bit. I was a huge fan of his when I was a kid, and yeah. so I got the opportunity to meet. And he said, "Geez, I've been legally blind, and uh, I've no always way. wanted to make some glasses." And I said, "Let's do a yeah. collaboration together." Um, there was another girl in my CFDA class um, named Rebecca Minkoff, and so I did a collaboration with Rebecca also. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, well, great. Well, I've got a lot more stuff to ask you. We're going to take a really quick break. We'll be right back. Awesome. <laughs> With more than 25 years of experience, BART's comprehensive perspective has earned acclaim from clients across the globe. Gain access to lessons learned throughout BART's career by following at BART Sandbergen on Instagram. To learn more about BART Sandbergen as an advisor, mentor, and public speaker, and for more information on OptiVest Wealth Management, please visit www.bartzandbergen.com.
Imagine what it would feel like to lose everything. Your job, your home, your family, your dignity. This has happened to thousands of the men, women, veterans, and young adults we serve at Working Wardrobes. What do we do to help? We provide career development services, life skills workshops, job skills training. We provide the perfect interview outfit, and we get clients placed in jobs. Call Working Wardrobes, 714-210-2460. Donate, volunteer, invest, hire. All right, we're selling the luxury stuff here today with uh, Bart Zanbergen and Letitia Always. You, you guys just seem to run in circles I don't even know are out there. How did you even find this? Uh, how did you guys, uh, through Dave at Bespoke? Yeah, mutual designer friend of ours. Yep. Yeah. All right. Phenomenal. Phenomenal stuff here. I'm fascinated to look. Is there a big market for this? Is, is high-end um, designer uh, eyewear? I didn't know that the category even existed. I think that there's a, uh, a whole generation uh, of kids that are enjoying learning about um, fine things. And whether it's um, uh, the way the uh, fabric is put together um, in a suit or the way the shoes are crafted. But I think, you know, after growing up in a supermarket disposable goods um, society uh, for a number of years, there's people that want to learn um, more about things of inherent value and about craftsmanship and about um, old world technologies that um, have been lost over time and I think when they do things like that they end up in a studio like Bespoke um, working with the tailor um, learning about uh, the scotch through the through Bespoke's <laughs> That's uh, right. uh, extensive scotch collection and <laughs> learning about cigars and everything. I mean yeah. learning how to, how to be a, a gentleman or, or somebody who understands uh, more refined things in life. So you oh. I was going to say, Paul, as soon as we get you out of your cargo shorts and tennis shoes, we'll get you. I'm being real quiet during this part here. You know, but I, and I've said this a million times. I'm an aging baby boomer. I'm an old ex-hippie kind of thing. And I still dress and act like that. Because we were revolting. And my father was very refined, custom tailor, sharp dresser, the rat pack. You know, liked all the finer things in life. He always said there was two ways to go in life, first class and no class. And unfortunately, I took the second route because that was kind of the consumer world that we lived in. It's just now disposable. we're going back I think we're going <laughs> to back. more formal. People exactly. enjoy it. Yeah, they want to exactly, look nice. Yeah. They want to dress nice. Yeah. Eat nice, dress nice. Live yeah, nice, yeah. Absolutely. Appreciate, appreciate the better things in life, yeah. So Shane, we're going we're to approach it on a little kind of a business angle now. So you're a business owner. You've you've got your employees. You've you've worked your way up. If you skinned your knees anywhere on the way, things that you would share with someone like, hey, I you avoid this or make sure you do that. Well, I, I think as a business owner, I mean, number one, if you're an entrepreneur, um, I always say, what you know, what do I do? And I'm like, I I make and prototype frames and manage inventory. And uh, so I, I just think, you know, really, um, as an entrepreneur, if you have a product, just keeping, it, it seems like, you know, sometimes like a thing that wouldn't be important, but managing your inventory is uh, critical um, to your cash flow and to your ability to grow. Great. So how do you explain to the audience what's the difference between like what Bark's glasses he's wearing right now that are very nice looking O'Neill standard be very kind. <laughs> very kind. <laughs> <Glasses>. <laughs> well, Compared to what you guys design. Well, I, I tell you, I mean, uh, number one, Bart's uh, dressed uh, nice all the time, so he certainly <laughs> all <the> understands. Time. <laughs> yeah. So he certainly understands uh, um, great quality and craftsmanship. But you know, if you wanted to start at the bottom of the food chain um, in your local gas station, you would see mm-hmm. glasses that were made from an injected process, and that would be okay. um, basically pouring plastic into a like a waffle iron and then putting some lenses in them. And so uh, that would be at the bottom of the food chain. Uh, then you would get up to the, the kind of stuff that you might see in a, in a Ray-Ban um, or uh, uh, Oakley or somewhere along that line, which would be a, a reasonably nice handmade product. And then when you get to the top of the food chain, you start working with titaniums and, uh, and high-tech alloys, and you start having more high-performance lenses. Um, you know, our, our temples um, take... You know, they have surgical grade stainless steel on the inside of the temples, and they actually operate on, not unlike a Swiss watch. I mean, the, the 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 mechanism that allows you the comfort and flexibility of that temple, which will never be never need to be adjusted over time. Once it's set, uh, it'll fit exactly the same for the rest of your life. Um, and then, if you look at the you know non hyperallergenic plating that we put on it, and titanium nose pads and everything else, you're just talking best in class product. Mm-hmm. And so. We sit on top of the food chain. Um, I don't uh, judge because, like anything else in your closet, you have your uh, 
your t-shirt to wear on the weekends and your you know and your Sunday best to to to, to, uh, to wear on Sunday. So. So a friend of mine told me once who worked in the action sport sunglass, he goes, everything comes with Luxottica. They, they own everything. This clearly is not a Luxottica, correct? Correct. Uh, yeah. If I play my cards right, maybe they'll, uh, they'll buy me <laughs> at some point. But uh, no, I mean, they, they are the 900-pound the, the gorilla. I mean, they, they, they have 8,000 you know, doors vertical retail um, in the U.S. Um, they own lens crafters and Pearl Vision Centers and, um, and uh, Costco Optical, Sam's Club Optical. I mean... Uh, sunglass hut yeah. um, and then brands you know they own oakley they own um right. you know ray-ban prada so yeah. wow. they're they're big so i'm really interested in your the name leisure society that's an interesting brand name so what's what's the story behind that well it started out as a social club so um before it existed i was uh, getting a group of friends together uh and it was similar to what we've been talking about of, of kind of learning you know age-old um traditions and and doing things, you know, that were, you know, that you didn't grow up doing. And so uh, we had just reached the professional point in our careers where we were starting to do fancier things. And so, you know, I said, good news, Bart, uh, you know, um, the limousine's going to pick you up at 9 a.m. and whisk you off to breakfast at the Four Seasons. And from there, you'll take your first-class coach uh, down to Del Mar, um, you know, where another driver will be waiting for you. And you're going to opening day at Del Mar, you know, the way that Bing Crosby did uh, when he wrote a song about it in the <laughs> 1930s. And so I finished this really extravagant itinerary, and uh, I just thought, like, geez, I'm from a town of about 2,500. Um, you know, I grew up with a box of wine in the fridge and, <laughs> and, and, and surrounded by, you know, hog farms and <laughs> cornfields. So I'm not the most sophisticated guy on the planet, but I'm learning. Yeah. And so I just go, this doesn't seem like me. So I go, I have to make it from an official organization. So uh, on the top of the invitation, I just wrote, by order of the Royal and Ancient Leisure Society. And uh, from then on, every outing that we had that seemed a little bit um, outside of our uh, class structure, um, you know, whether it was going to the ballet or uh, going fly fishing or doing kind of these age-old um, traditional, you know, I guess you could say blue blood type sports, um, they were always leisure society outings. And uh, so, it was, yeah, it was, the, it was the club and the organization yeah. that organized all that. That's a great story. That's mm-hmm. really good. Um you mentioned earlier you kind of self-taught through podcasts and books. Who you have favorite uh, podcasters or authors? I, I, I watch Joe Rogan pretty re- religiously. Okay, and Tim Ferriss and oh, Tim's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I have a friend named Ryan Hauser that uh, that founded Paul Frank, uh, and I like his podcast. He's a local boy. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, all right. Big brand, right? Paul Frank. Yeah, I mean uh, he doesn't own it anymore, but um, we work together. Um, I did a, I guess a eyewear line for them for the better part of yeah. uh, fifteen years. Okay. And so, Ryan's a awesome friend and a good strategic thinker, and uh, so I enjoy his podcast mm-hmm. too. So, um, our little birdie told me that you're just one of nine CFDAs. Is that is that true? Uh, nine eyewear designers in the CFDA. Okay. So, yeah, it's a small group, and uh, every year they uh, they vote another one in. So, yeah, it'll be. Well, it seems like quite an honor. I. Yeah, you can I, say yeah. <laughs> why, so why is that so important for me that I don't understand the this organization and why there's only nine? Yeah, I, I think it's just a um, it's an exclusive organization. Um, uh-huh. it, you are voted in by your peers, and and for every you know twenty portfolios that are submitted, you know one gets pulled out, mm-hmm. and so it's a real honor. And 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 also on the the fashion design of things, I mean, it really is the the working body of uh, of, fa- of global fashion design yeah. in the U.S. Yeah. So the, the classic question, where, where do you see yourself, your business, in five years, and ten years? Well, I, I want to be recognized as the world's you know, most successful um, luxury eyewear brand. I would like to be a household name, and I would like um, the products that we're creating now uh, and have created in the past to increase in value over time. Um, we're already seeing that, uh, where people have bought you know, the eyewear for a, a certain price point, and uh, we even... Uh, internally have have our vault and so when something's not going to be produced again and uh, the production was limited to begin with you see prices rise over time so we actually have a market price on our products and uh, you can go online and find products that are more expensive than we originally charged for them yeah which is an interesting concept in our super yeah yeah that's really, that cool. really cool all right well believe it or not we're just about out of time shane it's really been a pleasure having you in studio today and i do have the honor of asking our guests the final thought question so the final question is, what is your ultimate lesson learned over your career as a eyewear designer? To be humble 
and, and to just never burn a bridge. I'm always, uh, I approach each day and each relationship with kindness and, uh, and thanks and gratitude. And, uh, and that's gotta be uh, number one. Yeah. That's perfect. I love that. So how can people find you? Can you remind us in the audience how they can find you, all your glasses? And Yeah, if you just Google Leisure Society, um, uh, Leisure Dash Society. Uh, I wear? Or <laughs> no, just if you just Is oh, there, yeah, if, you just, if you just put Leisure Society, it comes up first. No kidding. So, yeah. Well, well done. Pick a unique name, and uh, yeah. I guess you're not that hard to find. <laughs> all right. Tish, anything more you have? I think that it's been great. Yeah, it's been really good to get to know you. Is there? Um, we can definitely put some things on our site too, so we can have people find you as well. And um, also, it's really important if you like our podcast or if you want to do follow up. Definitely, um, you can find us on um, Podbeam, and you can go to the Zambergen Report, Wealth Strategies and Investment Wisdom, and. We can make sure that people find you as well that way. Yeah, that's fantastic. And and I, I did want to say that we are a family-owned and operated business. So uh, my dad collects the bills and, and uh, my or collects the money, I should say, rather. <laughs> and, and my children work uh, there after school. And my mom uh, cold calls people. So um, we're local. And um, if you do go to the website and have any information, we're small enough where the, it, the questions come yeah. right to us. And I love that. I'll that's take great. care of you, yeah. That's great. All right, Shane, what's your guilty pleasure? Uh, I, I love playing polo. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. All right. All right, uh, Shane, thanks again for being in the studio today. You did a great job, really informational. Uh, thanks, everyone, who has tuned in, and we look forward to being back in the studio next week. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. With more than 25 years of experience, Bart's comprehensive perspective has earned acclaim from clients across the globe. Gain access to lessons learned throughout Bart's career by following at Bart Sandbergen on Instagram. To learn more about Bart Sandbergen as an advisor, mentor, and public speaker, and for more information on Optivest Wealth Management, please visit www.bartzanbergen.com.